So you're thinking about making a move to the Seattle area? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over Seattle as a whole, the entire metropolitan area, and give you an idea of some different locations that you might wanna consider moving to. So if you're making the move over here, you can hopefully narrow down your list of options to consider. So stay tuned. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos on what it's like living over here in the Seattle metropolitan area. People just like yourself reach out to me here from YouTube all the time when they're making the move over here. I am an active real estate agent in this area, so if you're moving over here and need some help finding that right house and picking that right neighborhood, I am more than happy to help you out with that process. But like I said on this video, I'm gonna go over the Seattle area as a whole. Seattle metropolitan, all the suburbs north, east, south of Seattle, and uh, hopefully narrow down the list for you on some locations that might fit what you're looking for. I'm gonna go over four different categories here. Urban living options, suburban living options, rural living options, and then the most affordable places to buy a home. So hopefully going through all four of these categories and hitting just about every city here in the Seattle Metro, you can hopefully narrow down your list of some options to consider for your next location to live. But like I said, I'm gonna take you through the map here. So let's jump over to my computer. I'll take you through the map. You can see right here in the middle, we've got Seattle and Bellevue. So this is the start of, you know, the center of the Seattle metropolitan area. Um, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So like I said, options we're gonna go over are urban, suburban, rural, and most affordable. So let's just start with the rural options here. So as you can kind of get um, a bird's eye view of this entire Seattle metropolitan area map, you can see the different shading, of course, on this map. Green is more rural and forested areas, and, and um, the gray area here is more densely populated areas. So if we're gonna look at rural options, we're really gonna be on the east side of the Seattle metropolitan area. The west side of Seattle metro, Seattle itself, is a much older area. It's, it's been developed for quite a while, so there's a lot of older homes in those areas and they're pretty dense, especially when you get close to the Puget Sound, there's a lot of very dense neighborhoods through there. So as you get further east, they're not quite as developed, some of these locations, and you have a lot better chances of finding some acreage properties. So let's just start on the north side up here and work our way down a little bit. So starting up here is Arlington. This is about as far north as I'm gonna go and consider the Seattle metro area, um, but you've got Arlington right here. So the town of Arlington is a historic town area. I've made a video previously on Arlington, going deep into that before, so you can check that out. Um, but the Arlington and even Lake Stevens area, all through here, there's Arlington Heights and Tafton and Oso all the way out here, you're gonna feel pretty far out in some of those locations. You can get you know two to five to 10 to 20 acres if you want it. Um, and then there's a lot of people that live up here and are very happy up here. And it can be a very, very nice place to live. And then as you go further south, um, you can, like I said, you bleed into Lake Stevens and Snohomish out here. Now, something to know about being up north here is if you are working, say in Seattle down here, if you're working in Seattle at a company, you're probably, and you're commuting every day, you're probably not gonna wanna live in Arlington. Uh, that's gonna be a long drive, at very minimum an hour each way, um, pro probably longer. If you're going in the, the head rush hour times, the middle of rush hour, you might have an hour and a half each way to get from Seattle to like the Arlington area if you're looking to live up there. So if you're living up there, really, you're gonna be wanting to work remote or have a job kind of on this north side area uh, to have a convenient kind of a doable commute um, as you start to go further south here into Snohomish, Snohomish is one of the most popular places um, for people that are looking for, uh, you know, acreage properties, small acreage, even larger acreage, and then it bleeds into Monroe out here as well. Snohomish is a really, really cool spot to be. You're right along Highway 9 here that can bring you into the east side down here where there's a lot of high paying tech jobs, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, there's a lot of companies down there. So there's a lot of people that will go up to Snohomish they'll have a little bit of a commute. You know, if you're going from Snohomish to that east side, Bellevue, Redmond area, you're gonna have, you know, 45 minutes each way at least. You can get a little bit longer on uh, on those tough days, those really busy days. Um, but Snohomish provides a lot of opportunities for one acre, five acres, 20 acres, right? There's, there's a lot of land out there in Snohomish. 
Um, there's also a cool historic downtown area. So there's, a, there's really a lot that Snohomish offers. I've done a video specifically on Snohomish. You can check out on my channel too if you wanna dive deep into that. Um, but it is one of the more desirable areas for rural living. Now, Snohomish is gonna be more expensive than up north that I just talked about, Arlington. As you get further south, closer to that center of Seattle Bellevue areas, it's going to get more expensive. As you keep going down south, you've got Duval right in here. <clears throat> I have a client that just purchased 10 acres with a custom built, you know, 5,000 square foot house in Duval. They're super happy there. It's a really good spot as well. So it can feel very wooded versus, I guess a good point to, to talk about here is Snohomish. You can have a mix of uh, very wooded and then very level and cleared lots. Um, kind of a, a, you know, a, a big difference there between some, some different types of acreage you can find. If you want something super flat, kind of wide open, uh, not really, really wooded and surrounded by trees, you can have that in Snohomish. And then you can also get plenty of wooded lots as well. We live in the Pacific Northwest. There's a lot of trees. When you're in Duval, it's pretty much all very wooded. You're not going to get wide open level lots for the most part here in Duval pretty wooded, but it's becoming a very desirable area. You can see proximity Duval here to like the Redmond area where Microsoft headquarters are. Um, so that it's a very desirable area for those that are looking for acreage and still wanna be close to things. You can do that here in Duval. And then as you keep coming down south, you've got places like Carnation and Fall City and Snoqualmie and North Bend that, you know, you're starting to get pretty far out there. Not as many people, um, you know, are going out there. They're smaller, smaller towns. Um, but they still definitely provide some acreage opportunities out that way. Um, and then we'll again, the prices will start to fall off a little bit as you get further out. As you're in the middle right here, Duval, and you get into, you know, the Sammamish area, east side of Sammamish, that's where it's going to be the more expensive areas for the rural properties. And then as you get further away, south or north of the Bellevue kind of central area there, it's going to get a little bit cheaper. Now let's um, let's zoom back out a little bit here. So that's kind of a good summary of some rural options and cities that you'll want to consider if you're looking for acreage. Now, if you're looking for say suburban areas, um, you've got a lot, a lot of different options. So it'd take a, a long time to go over every city specifically. So I'm gonna kind of group it together and go over some options for you here. So let's start, like I said, you've got Seattle Bellevue here. Let's just start on the north side of Seattle here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You've got this corridor of Shoreline, Edmonds, Mount Lake Terrace, Linwood, uh, all in right here. This is the area that I grew up in. This is very suburbia type of feel. You're gonna have a, a wide mix of different types of options. There's a lot of apartments and condos in here, but there's a ton of neighborhoods with Homes built anywhere from the 1950s and 60s all the way to new construction. And there's not a ton of new construction as you get further west because the west side has been developed more um, you know, in the past. As you're closer to Puget Sound, the more further east you go, typically the more new construction you can find. But there is still some new construction in these areas. Um, like I said, there's a lot of homes built in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s when these areas really started to develop. Um, <clears throat> your typical subdivision living, they're all convenient being close to I-5 here. You've got Edmonds is a very desirable area uh, because it's right on Puget Sound. So you've got homes with great views. The downtown Edmonds area is a really cool um, spot to go with a lot of restaurants and very walkable um, being on the beach there and taking the ferry over. So that's a really desirable area down there in the Edmonds area. Mount Lake Terrace and Briar, specifically where I grew up, they're becoming very desirable as well because proximity to, you know, the Seattle area down here. If you're working in Seattle, there's a lot of people that live right in here. We've got the light rail station, which is our train system um, that they keep expanding. And then next stop to, to be scheduled for completion is a Mount Lake Terrace stop. So if you're looking, you know, public transportation, you could live here in Mount Lake Terrace, get to that light rail stop and just take the train down into Seattle for work if you wanted to. I know there's people that are gonna be taking advantage of that. Um, and then in Alderwood and Linwood is where you've got a lot of your shopping and your malls and restaurants and things like that. It gets really busy. You can see the Costco and the Target up there. Um, so those, these areas, again, it's gonna change a bit depending on what neighborhood you're on, but median home prices, you can find anything really from 
700,000 to 900,000, kind of right in the middle. There's plenty of homes over a million as well in these areas, but 700 to 900,000, you can find a good amount of homes in these areas um, to live uh, right here, just on the north side of Seattle. Now, if you go a little bit further north and you go into the Everett, Marysville, and Lake Stevens areas, you're gonna get a bit of a break on pricing. Everett is a very historic, old town area. Now, this is the largest downtown area north of Seattle. So along with that, it's going to bring some downtown issues. There's, you know, can be a bit more crime in there, some homelessness, um, you know, all that kind of stuff that you see in a lot of large downtown areas. You're going to have some of that here in Everett, not nearly to the level that Seattle is, but just be aware there is some of that. But if you're somebody that's looking for a really cool historic colonial or craftsman style home, there's a lot of that here on the north side of Everett. A lot of older homes here. Some of them have views of the Puget Sound, so it can be a really good spot and, and cool spot to be as well. As you come a little bit further south in Everett and you get closer to Muckleteo, you're not going to have quite those downtown issues in here. You're going to have a lot of really nice homes that have quite a bit of, of good views as well through here by Harborview Park in this entire area along Muckleteo Boulevard. You can have some nice view homes, um, but not not necessarily quite as many, you know, craftsman, colonial, older style homes that you'll find in the North Everett area. And again, those, those prices, you know, you could start for an older craftsman, two to three bedroom home that needs, uh, needs some updating. You could find, you know, low 500s, um, and then, and then up from there, there's obviously plenty of homes that are a million plus that have views of the Puget Sound. And then as you get into Marysville here, uh, there's, you know, this is again, kind of suburbia. It's your cheaper end of suburbia when it comes to the North side, um, because once you're up here, you're, you're really pushing a, a realistic commute down to Seattle. I know there's plenty of people that do it, which is why the freeway gets backed up so much right here. Um, but, uh, it's pushing it for that commute an hour each way, probably at least, if not more here in the Marysville area from Seattle, but a lot of, again, 80s, 90s, and 2000s built homes. There's a lot of newer construction on the east side of Marysville along Highway 9 here that's been going in. And, and these, you can find homes, you know, three bedroom to four bedroom homes, anywhere from 550 to 750 is, uh, is kind of that, that bulk of that price point right here in the central Marysville area. All right, let's zoom back out a little bit. I'm not gonna go any further north because I talked about Arlington for rural living. As you get north Marysville and bleeds into Arlington, there's plenty of subdivision, suburban type living up in there as well and gets a little bit cheaper as you go north. But I'm gonna go back down south here. I'm gonna go to the east side here. So the east side is what we call the east side. It's, it's east of what we have Lake Washington. So Lake Washington right here separates Seattle and Bellevue. So this is what we call the east side. This is Bellevue, Redmond, Kirkland, got Bothell and Woodenville up here. And then you've got Sammamish and Issaquah down south here. So these area, this is the most expensive place to live in Seattle Metro, all of these cities. Uh, Bothell and Woodenville are a little bit cheaper than uh, you know Bellevue, Kirkland, and Redmond, but Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Issaquah, Sammamish, right here. It's going to be the most expensive place for you to live. Median home prices in these areas are anywhere from, you know, 1.4 to 1.6 million for median prices. You can find stuff, uh, you know, closer to, you know, 1 to 1.1 to 1.2. If it's a smaller home that needs updating, you can <clears throat> find some of those options in here. The reason, a couple of reasons that this area is so expensive is one, there's a lot of tech jobs in here. So Microsoft headquarters is right here uh, in the Overlake area. Uh, you can see Microsoft right here. This entire area right here is the Microsoft campus. So it gets, you know, there's a lot of money in this area. There's a lot of people that have moved here from out of state to take these high paying jobs and are buying homes in this area. You've also got Amazon offices on the east side here in uh, the Bellevue area. You've got Facebook offices over here. You've got uh, Google offices right up here in Kirkland. So there's a lot of high paying jobs in this east side area that bring a lot of people over here. Along with that, some of the top rated school districts in the state are on this east side area. Um, so that's a big, I hear from a lot of people that contact me here from YouTube that are moving over here and taking a job that they want to be on the east side because of the school districts. Now, your budget has to allow that. Like I said, median values are well over a million in all of these cities here. Other than Bothell, 
Bothell's a little bit lower. Median values are right around a million. Um, <clears throat> you're going to go a little bit further north, but that commute from Bothell to like Redmond, if you're working at Microsoft or something, is not bad at all. But as you're in these areas, they're very expensive. They're also very nice. So let's zoom into Bellevue here a little bit. So Bellevue is a large downtown area. We know about Seattle, large downtown area, and Seattle has its issues. There's tent cities, a lot of homeless and drug problems down there um, and can be, you know, littered with graffiti and trash on the streets and all that that comes along with being in the right in the downtown Seattle area. Over here in Bellevue, I've had many people tell me that have come over here and visited, and I agree. It feels like a, a different world in Bellevue. Bellevue is also a downtown area, but it's very clean. You're not going to have tent cities on the streets. You know, you're not going to have those issues anywhere near to the level of Seattle. It's actually a very pleasant downtown area to be. So you've got, you know, the Bellevue Square area for shopping and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to dive too deep into this yet because this is in my urban category. But just so you know, this is a, a the east side of Seattle is a, a pretty different feel than the uh, Seattle area uh, just because it's, it's really clean. And then there's a lot of new construction over uh, on this east side versus Seattle is very old. A lot of older homes. It's been developed a long time ago. This east side is still being developed. There's a lot of new construction here in Bellevue and Kirkland and Redmond and Issaquah and Sammamish. So there's a lot of newer homes going up and newer neighborhoods going up as they continue to expand because the demand is so high in these areas. You've also got Lake Sammamish right here. So good for recreation to take out the boat, um, go swimming, all that kind of stuff. Pine Lake Park is another one you can go swimming. So there's a lot to do in terms of recreation around here because you are on the east side. I mentioned Issaquah and Sammamish down here. Again, in this east side area, very desirable, very expensive, good schools. But the nice thing is you are really close to outdoor recreation. So if you enjoy uh, skiing, snowboarding, hiking, mountain biking, um, whitewater kayaking, all that kind of stuff, you can jump on I-90 here, which takes you out to the pass where you can do all of that stuff. Um, so a lot of, of easy access to a lot of, of outdoor recreation if you're living in this east side area. Not to say that if you're living somewhere else in Seattle, you can't get to it. Still pretty quick to get everywhere, but this is a, a very convenient location to be if you enjoy that kind of stuff. So this is that east side area. <clears throat> expensive homes, very nice neighborhoods, great schools, high paying jobs, most expensive place to live here in the Seattle metropolitan area. That's what you need to know about the east side. Okay, I'm gonna go, all right, so after that, I'm going to talk about the urban options. Before we go down south of Seattle, I'll talk about the urban options here in Bellevue and Seattle. So if you wanna live in a high-rise condo or you just wanna be close, close enough to everything that you can walk pretty much everywhere, rely on public transportation, maybe have an option to live somewhere without a car, um, you're really gonna have one main option and then um, We'll talk about Bellevue as well, but in Seattle, there's there's options for that if you want to be, you know, dependent on public transportation and super, super walkable. So we're in Seattle right here. One of the really popular spots for that is South Lake Union right in here. And I just recently did a video breaking down South Lake Union and took you on a vlog tour of that. So check that out on my channel if that interests you. <clears throat> but South Lake Union is where Amazon headquarters is. So there's a lot of tech workers that work here. Um, there's a lot of other companies, high paying jobs in this area as well. But with South Lake Union, it's pretty much just condos and apartments. So you're gonna be in a high rise building, but you're really walkable. There's a ton of restaurants down there. You are you have access to public transportation. Um, so it's a very walkable area and you could walk to your job. If you're working at Amazon or Google or any of these companies that are in the South Lake Union area, you could walk to your job every day. So <clears throat> that is a, a very popular spot for people to go. And then as you're going down south here, as you stay pretty central here, it's going to be the same thing like in downtown Seattle, a similar theme, whereas you're going to be living in a high rise building if you want a condo or an apartment. Um, those options are right in here. If you want kind of that urban feel, but you need a single family home, you want to be able to live in a home and not a condo or a townhome, zoom back out a little bit you can go just north. So you got the Space Needle right here. You can see Queen Anne and Magnolia. So you got Magnolia off to the west here and you got Queen Anne right here. 
two really popular neighborhoods that people you know like to move to when they want to be really close to Seattle and close to everything that it offers. Maybe they work at Amazon or one of these tech companies or, or any company down here in downtown Seattle. And they want to buy a home, but they don't want to deal with much of a commute every day um, and just want to be really close to everything. And they want to own their you know own single family home and not a condo or an apartment. Want a nice neighborhood. Um, Queen Anne and Magnolia are two places that are very popular for that. Pretty desirable when it comes to Seattle neighborhoods. So keep that in mind if, if that kind of fits what you might be looking for. You can see there's still parks, all these green spots. There's parks and golf all around here. You're right on the water. So you've got spots with views and good restaurants. So if you're in here, you have quick access to pretty much everything that you need and want. Um, you're just going to be close to Seattle. So getting in and out of Seattle um, can be, you know, very packed up. It, it, it's very, very bad traffic at times. But if you're working right in Seattle and you're just going back and forth from Seattle to this west side Queen Anne Magnolia area, it might not be too big of an issue for you. Then as you come over here, one more spot in Seattle to talk about is Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill is a little bit of a blend of some single family homes, but still a lot of apartments and condos. This is really, uh, it's a very young demographic. Um, very walkable as well as a lot of restaurants and bars. This is the heavy kind of bar scene, club party scene. So for a lot of younger, you know, young adults uh, population live in this area. Probably not as many families that live in this area as some of the other neighborhoods, um, but <clears throat> it's it's a very popular spot for, for that nightlife kind of stuff here. And you're still, as you can see, you're still close to everything and it can be pretty walkable as well. So urban options you're gonna be right in Seattle and there's some different neighborhoods to consider based on what you're really looking for. As we come back east over here, I talked about Bellevue. Bellevue, not quite as much when it comes to public transportation. Um, a little bit and the light rail is coming over to Bellevue soon, that train system. Um, it's not done yet, but it's gonna be over in Bellevue. But it's, you know, downtown is walkable when it comes to, um, you know, restaurants, there's restaurants everywhere. There's a lot of high rise condos and apartments here in downtown Bellevue. So it is very walkable when it comes to going to restaurants, going shopping. And if you work down here, um, there's plenty of tech companies and different companies down in this downtown Bellevue area. So it may be perfect for you to stay walkable and you're living in an area that you, maybe you like better than Seattle. It's, it's a little bit calmer than Seattle. Um, not quite as crazy, um, but it's also a little bit of a cleaner downtown area. Um, and so some people prefer it over that. Again, it depends where you're working um, for that walkability factor, but if you're working in downtown Bellevue, that can be another really walkable spot for you. And there's, like I mentioned, there's a lot of restaurants here in the Bellevue area, a lot of really great places to eat. So zooming back out here. All right, I'm gonna go over the last category here, which is the most affordable places to live. So this is kinda, as we come down south of Seattle, this is gonna be where you find your, for the most part, your most affordable housing when it comes to purchasing a single family home. So these prices can range, you know, if you're talking Tuckwilla, Burien, and Renton, and then going all the way down south to Tacoma area, Tacoma median price is right around 500,000. Um, you can find some homes in the 400s in Tacoma, and then, um, you know, anywhere in between like Federal Way and Auburn and Kent, there's a lot of homes from 500 to 600,000. So that's really gonna be kind of the, the lowest priced end of this uh, Seattle metropolitan area is this south side through here. Uh, they're gonna be a lot of similar feel for these neighborhoods. You're gonna have, you know, some of that, you've got some homelessness and stuff like that. It's not like downtown Seattle and whatnot. Um, there's some nice neighborhoods in here. I know plenty of clients that have purchased in here and love living here. Um, it's just going to give you a, a better option to find something a little bit more favorably priced. Now, if you want something with a little bit more space, you know, Auburn, there's some options. Uh, when you go on the east side of Auburn here, you can see as we go into the kind of green forested area out here, there's some options through here where you could find an acre or two acres or something like that and still not be too far out. Same with Covington, as you come to the east side of Covington into Ravensdale, um, places like that. And then Maple Valley is another really popular spot for people to go to, a little bit higher priced than the rest of the south side. So not quite as affordable when it comes to buying a home, but still some, uh, some more options out here to get a little bit more space um, rather than being you know on, a, on your average sized lot tucked in a cul-de-sac or something right on top of your neighbors. If that's something that's important to you, you can still find some of that out here in the Auburn area. 
And then as you get <clears throat> down into Tacoma, we know Tacoma is a, a really big, busy area. Um, historically, when I was growing up, it was pretty crime ridden, um, a lot of gang activity and stuff going on down there. It has really cleaned up quite a bit uh, over the years, recent years here. Um, there's a lot of people that have moved down here and really love living down here. They have, you know, historic areas. So a lot of older, again, craftsman style homes, if that's something you're into. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really coming along and, and it can be a nice place to live. Again, there's some neighborhoods that are better than others. Um, but, um, but I know a lot of people that uh, live in Tacoma and enjoy living down there. Seems like there's endless construction on I-5 through Tacoma right in here. Uh, as you get into Fife right here. I don't know why, it seems like my entire life they've been doing construction on, on I-5 right here. It seems to never end, so it's going to get backed up quite a bit with traffic. So if you're working in Seattle, in like downtown Seattle or Bellevue, if you're working up here, driving from Tacoma, again, there's people that do it. I wouldn't do it personally, but there's people that do. It's You're just going to sacrifice some of your day with traffic over an hour pretty easily each way, maybe an hour and a half on the really bad days. Um, so that's something to consider, but you can get a lot more for your money down here in the Tacoma area as home prices are quite a bit cheaper. All right, well, that wraps up my video here on the Seattle metro area. Hopefully it gave you an idea of some different areas to consider and kind of those different areas and what they offer. And hopefully something will fit your lifestyle. If you're planning to make the move over here, like I said, I'm an active real estate agent over here. Happy to help you through that process. If you're planning to purchase a home in this area, feel free to reach out to me here. I appreciate you watching this one.